This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Bro, gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way. Way. Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way. Can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact me today at advocateslaw.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there (laughs) deserves to be recognized. Yeah, all right, we made it. And the Men's Room knows just who it is. (laughs) So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. Master Kill! You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve Throw Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast an unidentified woman in Singapore. Now, she recently called animal control because she believed that there was a highly venomous snake in her house. Because you have to understand, when you live in Singapore, cobras are a legitimate and real problem. So she heard hissing coming from the cabinet in her bedroom. She figured, yeah, that's a cobra. Immediately reached out to Animal Control. Animal Control showed up because it's not a unique call for them. They show up in their protective gear, expecting a snake to jump out. Turns out it was not a cobra. It was even more horrifying. It was her electric toothbrush. (laughs) She keeps it in the same cupboard, uh, and it was just on and making noise. As soon as they turned it off, she apologized for wasting their time. Then after they left, she was bitten by an actual cobra. You're kidding me. I am kidding you. She was not bitten. Everything's true except that I just could not help myself. (laughs) Yeah. It was just her electric toothbrush. (laughs) But I only added that last part because deep down, I was hoping that would be true. But it's not. So let's drink. We pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitch, hola! You know it's bad choice Friday. It's bad choice Friday! You know it's bad choice Friday. Hey, man, this is your fault! All right, today on Bad Choice Friday, as you already know, and I don't need to tell you this, but it is National S'more Week, so we had a battle of the s'more, so to speak, with Uncle Cracker and the tune Drift Away and Hot Chocolate and You Sexy Thing. Mike, how was the voting? You know what? It was a pretty good turnout here today, Miles. 192 votes with a 60-40 split. There's a lot to love when it comes to s'mores, but there is nothing better than that delicious hot chocolate inside. Oh, there we go. You Sexy Thing won. All right, bitches, welcome to the weekend. Here's your winner on a Bad Choice Friday. It's Miles and Throw the Men's Room 99.9 KISW. See ya. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Oh, drat, I was driving along minding my own business when that vulgar leech hit my beamer with his pickup truck. I fear I've fractured my clavicle. I say, old boy, don't simply put it in the hands of your insurance company to sort it out. Talk with the dedicated road solicitors at the Advocates Law Firm. Pipe down, you old sod. The Advocates will see your case through to the bitter end and won't sleep a fortnight until they have victory in their grasp. Jolly good, old man. Jolly good indeed. You get injured, the Advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. And Geico is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to Geico.com or contact your local agent today. Start summer up by mixing things up with top paint and stain brands at Lowe's. 
Shop HGTV Home by Sherwin Williams, Valspar, Cabot to find the perfect pop of color or classic shade you've been looking for. And don't forget to prep your deck for the season with reliable wood stain and sealer. Now's the perfect time to complete your paint or stain project. Lowe's, all things summer, all at the right price. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Now for all TV news all the time, and it's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah! 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 I sound a little wet, you know. Yeah, I got the sip of water in super late. (laughs) Your choice is today, Seth Myers. Seth Myers. The Jimmys. But for Jimmy Kimmel, you have his ex-girlfriend, Sarah, Sarah Silverman. Silverman. Right? Okay. <laughs> no real reason to say that, but... <laughs> or Ted Smith. Is it Ted? Or is it late night? It is right there. The title all these guys have teams and talents for letters. Hope they come over their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine, is this an actual late night joke? And from whom? Or could it be a V. Ted Smith original? In space news, NASA announced uh, that a soft rock calls Mars sample fiasco. In other news, all surviving members of the Eagles have been arrested. (laughs) Uh, Fallon. Fallon. Smith! Boom! Damn it. Yeah! Coming out of the gate. That was my first thought. It's tricky. Like, it sounds like a Ted thing. <laughs> nah, it wasn't Ted. God damn it. I mean, I think the Eagles are the quintessential soft rock, right? I like the I Eagles. Mean, you know, I'm not making fun of the Eagles. No, they're Southern Easy uh, Rock. Real quick. Right. Was they the quintessential soft rock, though? They were part of that Maybe California not. sound. I know, yeah, like but Poco I'm saying quintessential soft rock. I mean, if there is such a thing, Bob Seger could fall in that category. No, he's not soft Southern rock. rock. Come on, man. Well, Shut your whore mouth. What about Hall and Oates? No, they're Philly. I know, but it's still like soft rock. Uh, what do we play on the sound? You have to check the Yacht Rock channel out there on uh, the Odyssey app. That's, that's a quintessential You're quite soft a salesperson. Yeah. Thank you very much. You get paid every time I say that. NASA says a soft rock calls a Mars sample fiasco. In other news, Chris Rock stopped drinking whiskey. <laughs> Vito Swift. Yeah, I just made that one up. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the show Cribs returned to MTV. I'm glad there's a show. I'm glad the show is back because now the only way to see now it's the only way to see inside a celebrity's home was by looking at their Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, or Facebook. Fallon. Fallon. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> the show Cribs returned to MTV. Yeah. I'm glad the show's back. Before now, the only way to see inside a celebrity's house was by looking at their Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, or Facebook. I will say though, people love that stuff. I and mean, when I was a kid. Uh, the the big show was Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Rich and Famous, yeah. With Robin Lynch. Yeah. Uh, football season is a few weeks away, but this season, they're trying to get rid of all the trash talk. They are going to strictly enforce the league's taunting rules. They want everybody on the field to respect each other, and that's such a weird message to send to players. Give that guy a concussion, but do it with a smile. Be nice about it. Ah, <laughs> uh, foul. Yeah, foul. Silverman. Football season is a few weeks Mm. away, but this year they are trying to get rid of all this trash talk. Um, They're going to strictly enforce the league's taunting rules. They want everyone on the field to respect each other, and that is just such a weird message to send to players. Give that guy a concussion, but do it with a smile. Be nice about it. You you can't get rid... uh, maybe, Maybe we're overstating it by saying trash talk. The difference between taunting and trash talk. They're going to talk trash because that's what they do. If we play the game of pick up basketball, we're going to talk trash. We're not necessarily being insulting or anything. You talk trash. It's, it's competition. But also in football, like, there's already lines of taunting. Like, I feel like the refs have a good idea. Now, look, when I played sports, I was not a very big talker. But I never minded playing against people that were that wanted to talk trash. For me, it would fire me up. Mm-hmm. And there's not, you know, like I loved it, and it was great to like. And a lot of guys, that's what they do. Yeah. I mean, it's just, and it's not even personal. They don't care who you are. You're just their opponent for three hours, right? And it's almost like a, I don't know how to explain it, but in certain sports areas or cultures, like 
some guy's going to talk a lot of trash to you. You play the game, you match up well. Like at the end, it's almost it's almost more like they're almost more impressed that like number one, you got the best of them, or, right. or just equal. But number two is like you didn't shy away because they were talking trash. But a lot of it, a lot of it too, is just the mental attitude. Think about Jalen Ramsey. He'll even tell you like, oh, I talk smack the entire game, yeah, because it gets in guys' heads, right? And I try it's to part find of the, the mental angle. strategy. And my brother and I've told, and we can't say it on there, but he told oh, what you hear in every and after every single play. It's like, a lot like, of nipples. Yes, they talk a whole lot of nipples, and um, no one's even really mad. It's just you and for six seconds, man, we're smashing heads, we're throwing each other to the ground. Like, who isn't going to say something? That was, you. Ha- that was half the fun of Richard Sherman. Is that one? He had the skill to back it up, and right. he was getting into the heads of everybody that right. that was on the other and side. Plus, of it. And sometimes you see it like the other way, where it fires people up. Plus, also like. It's one of those things, too. Like, listen, it's football. I, I fathom it's not an actual battle, but they're still going into it. A, a right, certain they type are. Of, right? And, like, you see this through all cultures. Like, there's always yelling, screaming, sure. people getting fired up. I mean, mentally, like, it's not a normal thing to go out there and slam your body into somebody else. So you you got to find that it's, spot. And what do they do at the end of each game? Typically, the players have been squaring up on each other. The wide receiver and the DB, that had been, as far as we know, watching the game. Yeah. They hate mm-hmm. each other. They're saying all this crap. They've shoved each other. At the end of the game, they're the first two guys to find each other yeah. because you want the guy that brings out your best, which is the point. And Not- also, also look at what happened at the beginning of a lot of soccer and rugby games when it got really popular to do the haka, that, that old Maori. Right. So, right, oh, so right, right. the All Blacks from New Zealand, they do it every time. Right, yeah. and it, I mean, the, but that is. I a, know that's the name of the team. But mass- still, every time you say <laughs> New every Zealand, no, New Zealand, say, it's New Zealand, man. It's- every time they do that hockey, like it, it is too intimidate yes. the other people, and it comes from men going into battle, and they were it, firing it's, themselves. It's psychological up. warfare, and, and you're doing. It's different. Like, look, in NBA basketball, you can be the free throw line, and you, your opponent, you respect them, you know them, you know them as friends, basically. You know, even if they're on a different team. And you can lean over and go like, your ex is in my DMs last night. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, but you're not punching someone. Like, and the reason that they don't trash talk in boxing is because you wear a mouthpiece. Hockey, oh, they, they trash talk they, in boxing. They, they, they do. But, 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 you know, like on the regular, hockey trash talks. Football does. Baseball, you'll have a comment that'll stir it up. But it's not, it's not, it's not the same sport. It's like not that. confrontational. Exactly. Like football is one of those sports where they give you basically an, the entire biography of a guy's life. Mm-hmm. All right. So when you go into the to the Scully meetings or the Scout meetings, they basically show you every single guy that you'll be up against. You know their sisters' names. You know their mom's names for a reason. You know their hometown. They yeah. give you this so that you can do a psychological profile on someone. So if you want to talk crap on them, you know, hey man, this guy's from West Virginia, or hey, this guy was like a you know I don't know a, a peanut farmer and and you know Georgia. Might, they did the same thing for you. Yeah. And they looked at it the same way. I mean, the stuff that we in it's in it it's almost as funny when you hear it as it is when it's being done on the <laughs> like it's it's just an assassination of intelligent humor that you're really trying to dig at someone to take them out of the game. And also like, I mean that's what it that's is. what I'm saying. Like some people like to trash talk to fire themselves up, some people do it just like I like again, I loved it when other people did it because it would fire me up. Right. And these but, are professional athletes. Yeah. They 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 can, they can handle speaking, it. They, they can get it up. They they call a bulletin board uh, you know, font right. for the most part. So if if a newspaper back in the day used to trash you, they would put that up on the bulletin board and go, Hey, uh, they think our safety is gonna get burned the entire game because of this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that and that guy would come out and play the game of his life. Yeah, I get it. Right, and, and she's just saying trash talk. But right, there, there's ob- and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's one of those things like taunting. Like I don't know how to explain it, but there is a level of taunting. But like, look for Husky fans. Like, sorry, Jake Browning pointing at Oregon when he runs into the end zone. Like, I'm fine with that. You know Who what I mean? Like, I don't know if he got a penalty for that or not. But they hadn't beaten Oregon in like a decade. Like that. Like. Mm-hmm. Technically, I guess in college you could call that taunting. Like, come on, that's fun. I feel like I'd have to tell my coach, knowing how I am. Hey, if I have a good game, coach, I want to apologize for the 120 yards of penalties I'm going to rack up. Right? Because I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know before the play what I'm going to do, and I'm going to let you know why I did what I did. Do you know where they? Or I'm going to get my ass kicked. Do you know where they need to really enforce those rules, which is unfortunate but true? Is the stands? Yeah, more so on the field. It's the guy that walks in in a visiting, uh, you know, team jersey or whatever. He is going to hear it all day yeah. long. I'm prepared he for it. He bought the ticket. He's walked into the stadium. You want to talk about someone getting a bunch of crap? It's the fan more so than the player. And here's the and thing: no one says, "Like no usher comes up and goes, I'm going to give you a 15 yard penalty or, or kick you out of here if you don't stop, you know, talking crap." The fans get it more than the damn players. But to be honest, to your point, knowing knowing what I know and being how I am, 
The last time I went to a game, a live football game, it was the Ravens. It was in Baltimore against New England. Yeah, everyone's familiar with New England. But I still did a little research. So when I yelled certain things that the players can't hear, but their fans can hear it, it's these things are gonna, that are going to drive them crazy. I'm going to that Raiders game, that first Monday night game. I'm already doing my due diligence. Because when I talk smack, it's going to be inarguable smack. The best you'll be able to tell me is to shut up. Yeah, that's the best. But I will never be wrong in my because I plan on talking analytical, inarguable, factual trash on your team. Get over it. Psychologically, it's just the same thing. Yes, no Patriots game. You you can talk crap on the field all you want, or you could yell, "Matt Damon sucks." Right. (laughs) (laughs) Never made a good movie. You're doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Like it's just Oh dude, I'm I'm right. I'm working up for legal the- seafood is overrated. And this is where I'm gonna get stabbed. <laughs> but it's like, hey, guys, at least when I talk smack, it's out of respect for the game because everything I said about your SC team is right. true. <laughs> and John Gruden John Gruden will be my only opinion. Everything else I say about your team is gonna be a fact. But understand I did my due diligence and I have found, at least in my experience, inevitably there's a few guys. Uh, that threatened to kill me or beat my ass when the game ends. Yeah, most of the time don't take it seriously. There's a guy in San Francisco. I'm like, I might shut yeah. up, but but, but, that you said, you're still trash talk. but usually even yeah. their fans laugh because you're hitting the thing. Why you did can, you guys buy uh, build a new stadium uh, north of Los Angeles instead of in San Francisco? Right. I mean, <laughs> anything doesn't matter, and the players do the same. Just be prepared with your smack talk. So at least. At least, even if people get mad, you say, all I'm doing is quoting facts. Mm-hmm. Jerry right. Garcia sucked. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a strange story. So, Kelly Clarkson's going through a divorce. It's not done yet. Uh, well, the prenub was held up. Ah, okay. So, she was That's on the all voice. She wanted, right? right. And she celebrated, which, fair. I would just ask, keep the same energy. For everybody's prenups. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. You know how this works. I know. That's Just saying, let's keep road, the same brother. energy mm-hmm. when everybody's prenuptial agreement is upheld in court. I hope everybody gets to celebrate on TV. All right, Home Alone. People love that movie. Do you need to remake it? I don't know. Why? Hollywood does. What? Oh, yeah. Now, hear me out. Uh, there's a new movie coming to Disney+. Plus. It's called... Home Sweet Home Alone. At least they changed the name. Comes out on November 12th. It's about a boy named Max who's left at home. He was born in the 2000s. Oh. (laughs) Here's the shocking part. He's left alone. Well, yeah, it's home alone. Uh, His family's on a vacation in Japan. A married couple attempt to break into Max's home to get their hands on a priceless heirloom. I'm guessing like probably like a Faberge egg. (laughs) Yeah, because those are all the rage. <laughs> I know. Somebody will get that. Uh, he's got to protect it. But Keenan Thompson's in the movie. Uh, Eli, what's her name? Ellie Kemp- Kemper? Kemper. Ellie Kempler or Kemper? I can't remember. Kemper. I don't know From right. the office. Right. right. She's very funny. Rob Delaney was very funny on Twitter. Mm-hmm. His stand-up wasn't as good as I'd hoped. But they're all pretty funny people. There's no word on who's playing who. But Look, I'm like, it's not all right, bad. the cast seems decent enough. The cast does seem decent enough. This is always my issue with the Hollywood remakes, right? And, and I get, like, they've run out of ideas. they got plenty of ideas. They just don't pursue them necessarily. But look, if you're going to remake a movie that most people consider a classic, and you can like or dislike Home Alone, but most people go like, right, it's in the canon of classic movies, leave it alone. If you're going to remake a movie, why don't you take a movie that you feel like could have been good, but they effed it up when they released it? They do it every once in a while. Like God's, you know what I mean? That's but no, but you're, there's some movies too. Like I, like I get it. Like action movies that you remake for a newer audience, cool. I but understand. But like Christmas that. Story, like Christmas Story was dated when I watched it as a child. So I don't think it's like something like that. Like it's so long ago. Like you don't need to remake that because none of us grew up with. Those kind of cars. But that's also what flips. makes it. That's what makes it fun. So even with, but, right. but I feel like that with Home Alone. Like, and look, I'm not a Home Alone apologist. It was what it was. But in the end, like, take a movie that flapped at the movie theater. And re, what was it? John something that Disney made, right? And it was this John Carter, right? John Carter. You spent all this money, and and I never saw it, but it was a flop. So if you're going to remake something, why don't you remake something that sucked and make it good, and to still bring that story to audiences? And you go, oh, okay. We don't need to redo the movies that people already like. Jaws is dated. E.T. No, is dated. Well, I mean, they, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Main thing is, though, you live in Seattle. What are you doing this weekend? I know it's not a real game. 
It's a preseason game, but the Seahawks are on. They're all watching. It doesn't matter. Saturday, right? It doesn't matter. There's only three. Here's the thing to remember, though. There's only three preseason games this year. Yeah. So, in theory, you should see the first team get a decent amount of action in the first yeah. half. Okay. If it's like last night, yes. Yeah. So, it's going to be a full first quarter. And for the first time in, uh, in the Raiders' new stadium, they'll have fans. So yeah, last year they played without fans. This is their first game where there's actually you can hear noise. Yeah, yeah. You know, which, I mean, who knows how loud that? I mean, that'd be cool to. for the Seahawks too. Like, even if you're getting booed, it'd just be cool to look up in the stands and be like, "Oh, people!" And you're in Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You are listening to the Men's Room. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID nineteen vaccine hesitancy in the Black community, let's remember it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Well, great balls of fire, Bubba. What happened, Bilford? That crazy son of a sow blew right through that four-way stop of Main Street and plowed into my cowboy Cadillac. Your what? My pickup truck. And I'm pretty sure my leg is broken, Ted. Oh, quit your bitching, Buford, and talk with those side busters at the Advocates Law Firm. When I got busted up last month, well, shoot, they made sure those snakes at the insurance company played fair. Boy, howdy. Even that creepy so-and-so Kyle earned his keep. So if you get injured, the Advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Start summer up by mixing things up with top paint and stain brands at Lowe's. Shop HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams, Valspar, Cabot to find the perfect pop of color or a classic shade you've been looking for. And don't forget to prep your deck for the season with reliable wood stain and sealer. Now's the perfect time to complete your paint or stain project. Lowe's. All things summer, all at the right price. Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. South Carolina officials arrest a man who stole a horse and then hid it in his bedroom. Meanwhile, a mom finds out that she has not one, but two entrances to her womb. Japanese mayor uh, learns that uh, only Olympians can bite their gold. Man released from prison for murder does something that he thinks is uh, pretty bold. And a Wisconsin woman learns not to use a gun's laser pointer to play with her cat. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. Oh, man. Our top story, we go to South Carolina where police got a tip about a theft. They arrived at the home. Oops, Daisy. And were greeted by the suspect's father who then led them to his bedroom. When he was finally coaxed to open the door, they confirmed their suspicions as the quarter horse that they were looking for was in the room with the suspect. Hmm. It should also be noted that the horse's feces were found on the ground in the hall oh. before they went to the bedroom. The man was arrested and the horse was returned to its owner. Do you really hide a horse in your bedroom Honestly, or do you just have a horse in your bedroom? Where else are you going to hide it, though? It's not like you can put it in the back uh, the backyard because they're going to find it back and there. And that's why you don't steal it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't By the steal way, something you can't hide. I agree with half of that text. Stick it. <laughs> In other news, we all know that one of the easiest ways to get a cat to play is to bring a laser pointer into the mix. It's just a fact. Uh, it was also <laughs> the thinking of one woman that was drunk at a friend's home and wanted to play with a cat. Uh, but where does one find a laser pointer? If you guessed the handgun in the nightstand, you guessed correctly. She drunkenly, drunkenly, by the way, grabbed the handgun and started playing with the laser attached to it to attract the cat. You can guess the rest. She then accidentally shot her friend while playing with the animal, landing her friend in the hospital and herself arrested. I figured she shot the cat, so. Oh, she shot her friend. That's where I thought it was going, but no, she shot her friend instead, which, I mean, I prefer to shoot the friend instead of the cat, but... Just the number of rules that were broken here. One, you're drunk and handling a weapon. That's just a bad news all day. Two, the finger was obviously on the trigger, which is already a rule. You're pointing it somewhere that you don't intend to, to fire, which is already a rule. The weapon was loaded. Mike and I <laughs> talked about this this morning. We said this is one of the few times that whether you hate guns or if you're a gun rights activist, both sides agree. Oh, God. You're an idiot. 
And right? the laser's I mean, detachable. Like, people, right, the laser's detached. People that own guns go, like, man, you handle them with respect. You do it with safety. You're very aware of what you're doing. You didn't do that. People that are anti-gun are like, this is what we're talking about. Right. Like, she just united two sides. Like, you're the problem. And I guarantee yeah. to you that friend that you shot much rather prefers that they be pissed off that you completely screwed up their already calibrated laser <laughs> as opposed to getting shot by their own weapon. <laughs> Criminy, <laughs> gang. Jesus, man. Boy. Interesting story out of Cleveland. A woman just got married to a man that had been convicted over 30 years ago of murdering her brother. Oh, that is she so married weird. the guy who yes. was convicted. Yes. Of murdering her brother. As the story details, she wasn't convinced of the conviction at the time of the sentencing, seeing that he was convicted despite there being no real evidence that he was involved and wrote the man letters while he was in prison, promising to fight for his freedom. Now, three decades later, his conviction was overturned after enough evidence was submitted to call the decision into question. During the time of uh, his fight to freedom, the pair had fallen in love and recently got married. I mean, That's crazy. That, it that is, is yeah. Well, which, you know, there, there's someone out there for everyone. Which tells me that she never believed for a second that she actually killed her brother. I think he was in the wrong place yeah. at the wrong time. Sure, there's a sure, lot of sure. circumstance that, that led to it. Like like they were saying, there was there was no residue it, look, of the weapon on his hand or anything like that. I hate to say it, but it defies logic. There was a guy in Spokane in prison, all right? One of the inmates kept uh, joking with him and mocking because he was in jail for raping that guy's sister. Oh, God. Well, that guy beat him to death. He gets another 25 years. To me, I understand that. 100%. Right? I don't understand this. No. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to ask a lot more questions right. than this. Yeah. And that is it for your headlines of that. Go Hawks! My Hawk is on! Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. More men's room on the way. The men's room happy hour. We've got the Ted versus the FCC redemption. Would you rather? And we'll probably get drunk. Woo! Yeah, let's hope so. But in the meantime, we be all about this bitch for the next 90 seconds. So until then, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, Stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man. A double flush production. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember. It didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today. And our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. $20 million. $19 million. $17 million. $19 million. $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today.